Tiffany, welcome. Uh, so to get us started today, we are gonna have your pop quiz question of the day. So for you, the pop quiz question is, and this is one that like is really, I have a strong answer on. So Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? Oh goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go first instinct to Backstreet Boys. Oh my gosh. I'm a huge <laughs> Backstreet Boys fan. All the way. Did I, I went did to I Naples. answer accordingly to you, how you feel? You did. <laughs> but I hope you weren't just pandering to me and what I liked. I hope that's truly your choice. It's true. Um, I don't know why, but my family growing up, we were just, we were more of a Backstreet Boys family. So, so I stuck with it, but I, I like both. So big fan. Oh, good to hear. You know, it's always a tough call because NSYNC had Justin Timberlake that came out of it, but still mm -hmm. you just can't beat the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. He's had an incredible career as a solo artist as well. Just an, an amazing voice. So big fan of Justin Timberlake as well. Exactly. Well, welcome to the Renew podcast presented by Rentspree. I'm Lauren Martin, sales director of the prop tech company Rentspree. This podcast is a featured offering of Renew, an initiative that aims to elevate female voices, share insight on how to navigate industry challenges, and showcase the remarkable achievements of women in real estate. In this episode, I am so excited to be talking to a dear friend of mine, Tiffany Tanquiri, Senior Partner Manager at DocuSign. Tiffany has been at DocuSign for six years and was at Zillow prior to that. We'll be discussing Tiffany's professional real estate journeys, as well as the importance of female mentorship and empowerment within the real estate industry. Tiffany, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Absolutely, Lauren. Thank you for having me on your podcast today. I'm genuinely excited to be here. Um, I think we should tell the listeners a little bit about how we met in January um, in New York City in the Big Apple. What do you say? I would really love that. You know, we've known each other virtually for quite some time and it's just excited to find exciting to finally like get a get to put a face to a, a virtual a virtual background. I know. I'm so thankful to be back in person doing meetings face to face. Obviously we were all stuck at home during the pandemic, but to be traveling for business again and to be meeting your counterparts externally in person, there's there's really nothing like it. It's just invaluable for business and, and on a personal level as well. Um, so we got to meet in the lobby at Inman Connect. We were both at the industry event Inman because Renew by Rent Spree had organized a private tour of the Met Museum, which was incredible, by the way. Thank you so much for organizing that day. I think for me, it was truly one of a kind and special. And I can't remember our tour guide's name exactly. Do you recall what her name was? But she was a professor at Columbia University, right? Yeah, she was. She was amazing. She was amazing. And I actually used to live over by Columbia many, many years ago, another lifetime ago in Manhattan. Um, but I could have spent another few hours with her. She was just so knowledgeable and made learning about the pieces so fun and engaging and just tying everything back to present times. Um, so my favorite installation was the Egyptian temple room, the one where we took the group photo. And I think it's called the Temple of, of Dender. Do you remember that one? I do. It's such a moving experience. Yeah, just the scale um, and the history in that room was really amazing. So I'm glad we had that bonding experience. And you brought a lot of industry women together that day, um, people who I still stay in touch with. So that was really neat. Oh, well, that's so heartwarming to hear. I have goosebumps really, because that is at the core why I wanted to found Renew is to bring people like you, um, really just industry leaders in the prop tech realm together with agents and brokers and MLS executives. Cause you know, it's not often that we get the time to bond personally outside of like work conversations. And there was so many wonderful conversations that took place and it really just warms my heart to hear that you keep up with them. And also just the experience itself. I loved that exhibit too. I'm a huge art history nerd and <laughs> I learned so much. Like I, I thought I knew it all and I knew nothing as soon as I got there. So yeah, one day is just not enough for the Met. So we'll have to do that again, maybe next year. Yeah. And you know, it's cool too, because the ancient Egyptian art is some of my favorite because it really is one time in history where it was female dominated, right? Like all of the Egyptian princesses and goddesses are, you know, people that were moving to them and it's art focused around 
beautiful women and how powerful they were. So it was definitely a surreal moment to stand there with so many powerful women in such a cool exhibit. Yeah, I I totally agree. Well, I'm so glad that you're on this podcast because I think that you bring such a unique experience into the industry. Somebody who really has um, kind of dominated in the prop tech space. So to get started, I would love for you to kind of tell us about your journey to the top of real estate leadership and just all the stepping stones you took along the way. Sure, sure. Um, So I, I began my career in technology actually in Silicon Valley, where I was born and raised, which I think is kind of rare these days. I think a lot of people move to the Bay Area, you know, for business, but I was truly, truly born and raised there um, all throughout. So eventually I moved to the greater Seattle area, um, the Pacific Northwest and began my real estate journey, obviously purchasing and and selling uh, my own first home, but also working at Zillow, as you mentioned, uh, working on a fairly new team at the time, the new construction team for for builders in residential real estate. who are doing well now with, with low inventory. Um, new construction home builders are in a great position in this current market. Um, but while at Zillow, a recruiter on LinkedIn actually identified me and reached out proactively about an exciting new opportunity at DocuSign, which I had, of course, heard of and used before as a customer, um, to create a new line of business for the company in regards to forms and transaction management for broker clients. And, you know, I think it's a great piece of advice um, that I kind of took for myself and other people should as well, which is um, to always be open to new opportunities. You know, I wasn't necessarily looking at the time, but it turned out to be the career move of a lifetime for me and, and one that I've I've never regretted, right? And, and I'm still in today. Uh, mind you, this was pre-IPO when DocuSign was still a privately held company, only had probably less than a couple thousand employees. Uh, now I believe we have about or nearly 7,000 employees globally. So wow. I truly, yeah, so I've truly had the opportunity to see the company grow and evolve in the most wonderful of ways. So since 2017, my role has grown and expanded a couple of times. Uh, now I oversee residential real estate on behalf of the partner ecosystem in the business development org, uh, and I'm truly enjoying it each and every day doing this work. So our goal is to enable agents, brokers, and realtors alike to do more deals faster through the digital agreement platform. And I think we're doing a good job of that today. Yeah, well, you know, I think you bring up a really interesting point. Um, You never know when the perfect job is going to come along. And I know this isn't really a part of our our agenda for today, but something interesting that you said is, and I think that goes really with all aspects of any relationships in our lives. We never know when we're going to find, you know, the perfect significant other, the perfect friend, the perfect job, and they always seem to come in the most unexpected times and unexpected places. So I really just think that's a valuable thing for our listeners to hear is like, you never know when the perfect job is going to come along. And you're a great example of, you found the perfect fit and it's wonderful to see how much you guys have grown. Yeah. You never know what's around the corner. So just being open to the possibilities for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Well, so you've been described as fearless and a self starter, um, in your roles, in your work at DocuSign. I'd love to just hear kind of, you talk about these attributes and how you acquired them and how you've really honed in on them throughout your career and your journey at DocuSign. (laughs) <laughs> Those are some big ones, fearless um, and self-starter. I, I think they're important attributes for women in any industry, right? Not just residential real estate, but it's just important to be fearless, I think, in all that you do. And it, it might sound a little bit apropos, but I've learned that you absolutely do miss 100% of the chances that you don't take. So mm-hmm. to be fearless means to take chances and to take risks. And those are all things that I I tried to do in my career. And I think that have helped me take big projects and initiatives and also just my own career trajectory to to the next level. I also think it's important to not let the world or business change you or harden you or, or make you different than who you fundamentally are. So if you make the choice every day to stay true to yourself, you'll always be able to trust your own instincts and generally make the right decision. So I hope I remain fearless. <laughs> I hope everyone does. Yeah, and I think it's 
I think it's so impactful, especially when speaking to other women, because we are faced with a decent amount of adversity. And, you know, the more you face that adversity head on, and nobody truly is 100% fearless, right? We are a fear. But to be fearless, I think, to your point, means being true to yourself and never giving up and never saying no, you know, you 100% miss the chances you don't take. And it just it makes me laugh because I think of my dog. Um, she's a rescue from Puerto Rico. She's truly a street dog and she is afraid of everything. Like if a bag falls on the floor, she thinks like the world is coming to an end. And I constantly like tell her to be brave. And my, my parents laugh at me because I'm like telling this little tiny dog to be brave. But I think that that's true. And I think that's what you're saying is be brave and take the chances and stay true to yourself. Yeah, I I can identify with that, Lauren. I'm actually uh, a mother of two golden retrievers. I like to joke. Um, And one of them is terrified of cardboard boxes. So I (laughs) I understand (laughs) yours is afraid of of the bags. Mine's afraid of the boxes. So we'll, we'll have to work on that together. Yeah, please send me any tips that you have. I'd like try to like, as soon as a bag comes around, I'm like, oh, throw it away, throw it away. Be <laughs> and these are household items that show up often, grocery bags and Amazon boxes. So we'll, we'll have to find a way around those hurdles. Yeah, I know, I know. She's also terrified of baby strollers. She's like, what is that tiny little human in this like little like spaceship? Like, I don't know, I'm not, not okay, you know? So any tips you have? <laughs> Me telling her to be brave. I don't think me, I think maybe she like speaks Spanish or something because she's from Puerto Rico and she just doesn't like understand me, but me telling her to be brave. She's like, "Uh uh-uh, man, I'm not getting near that bag. (laughs) We'll face our fears together. Exactly. Well, so you mentioned fearless, but self-starter, I really feel like that is, that is true to you. You know, I haven't known you for, for very long, almost a year now. Um, but you really are, you know, you're one to take initiative. You're one to, um, try to think outside of the box with partnerships and, um, you know, really make sure you're on top of all of your relationships. And I I think that's a very good word for you. So any other little pieces you want to hone in on there? Yeah, well, it's interesting that you, you touch upon relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, I think networking is a key driver for me as well. I'm literally a partnerships manager. So I, I manage relationships for a living, but it's a slippery slope, right? Because you can be great at networking and you can know a lot of people and have a lot of contacts um, in your industry. But if your contacts don't know you and who you are and what you do and what your value is to them, these relationships are just going to remain relationships, which is great, Mm -hmm. but they won't drive business results. So it's key to take your relationships to the next level and ensure that they're bi-directional you know, so you know who your contacts are and, and where they work and what they do and what they offer. And then they know the same about you. So if they're in a room without you, possibly not even leveraging your service or technology or whatever it is that you may do, but are speaking to someone else who might, that's a great way to leverage your network to drive clear results. Um, so, and just making sure that you maintain and grow in a positive way in these relationships yeah. um, because you never know who you're going to encounter again, right? So never burning bridges and just making sure to stay in positive standing with, with everyone that you encounter. I think that that's such a good point, you know, especially in this industry, we touch upon this in my, my last podcast too, but um, with Katie, it's just, this industry is so, um, you just change, change names on your business card, right? Like a lot of people that you get to know stay in the industry for a long time. And I, I think that's a good point that you bring up is just making sure to keep on top of those relationships and never burn bridges. Absolutely. Well, awesome. So kind of piggybacking off of that, what stands out to you as some of the keys to success um, in your journey? And then also after that, what are some of the biggest challenges you think you've faced? Keys to success. Um, Yeah, I mean, I want to make this broad, right? Because not everybody who's listening is necessarily a realtor or an agent. Not everyone is in SaaS or technology. Um, But I think what's just helped me along the way is setting clear goals for myself, obviously, 
but sharing them with others, right? And voicing those goals to other people um, to get them excited about what I'm about to go do or what I plan to do. Because not only does it hold you accountable and make you feel accountable, but other people getting on board with your goals, um, they can be thinking about that in the back of their minds and may be able to contribute to that positively and, and help you along the way. So I like to set clear goals and I like to share those goals. And sometimes they don't come true, right? Sometimes those goals are a mess or they don't work out or they end up not being the best idea. And, and that's when you pivot, right? And you, you have amnesia, right? And you just move on to the next thing as it were. Um, but I, I like to, to share my goals with other people. And I've also been a bit better at delegating recently, which feels sort of <laughs> uncomfortable at first. Um, yeah. And isn't something that I did for years. And it sort of held me back with time management. But once you master the skill of delegating, you create more space for bigger thoughts and more long-term initiatives, which is exciting to me. Um, so those are some nuggets um, for some keys to success. And biggest challenge, I think, historically, and will probably continue to be at this point, is strategic focus. Because there's so many areas where I could be spending my time. There's specific partners I could be working with, whether it be our association partners at the state and local level, the boards, the different MLSs, um, working with different ISV and prop tech companies and partners, but just narrowing everything down to the vital few and doing a really good job in a few key areas, right? And, and moving the needle maybe in a sense that's quality over quantity, whether that means implementing a successful integration, right? That'll truly revolutionize a workflow for agents or provide them with a feature or functionality that will save them time and energy and money for many years to come. These are the bigger picture, bigger ticket items that I'm thinking about when it comes to strategic focus. Yeah. Well, I think you bring up a good point on your, um, your just kind of like keys to success, which is delegating. I am like you, I'm queen of like not delegating and I'm getting better at it. It's definitely a learned skill. I think just innately people are like, well, I, if I know how I want it done, I'm going to do it myself. Right. And mm -hmm. the perfect example of that is if you get me in an escape room, man, or any type of like competitive situation <laughs> where I have to problem solve, I am a totally different person. Like <laughs> just get serious real quick. We did one rent spree, did a like team bonding exercise. My whole company like laughs at me. Cause I was like getting frustrated that people were like taking clues all over the place. And Caroline, who I think you met at the med event, she was like, we have to delegate. We have to delegate. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I just smarter, not harder. It. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Work smarter, not harder for sure. But I, I think jokes aside, I think that's a good lesson because we can't do it all. And we try to be like Wonder Woman and do everything. But I think kind of bringing back to the, the point of this podcast, which is mentorship is when you delegate, I'm sure you find that it, it gives you the opportunity to mentor others or for others to mentor you on how you want things to be done or the way things are headed. So I think that that's a really good point. Right. And, and a lot of times you have an idea in your mind of how it should work or how someone else should work on something on your behalf and they show it to you in a different light and turn it upside down, right? And contribute to the initiative in a completely different way that you wouldn't have thought of. So delegating leads to collaboration, which usually makes everything better, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, that's something, it's funny you mentioned that, it's something we've been talking about a lot at Renew is just bringing people together because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. And the more we collaborate, the better things will be. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, but my next question is DocuSign. DocuSign is a large national player with a substantial reach into different industries. Um, what are the growth opportunities that you see for DocuSign in the real estate space? Yeah, great question. Uh, we certainly have a strong national presence for residential real estate, and mm -hmm. we're doing great work in Canada now as well. Um, but DocuSign is a publicly traded global company with offices all over the world, which I'm so proud of and would love to go visit. Uh, I think we have about 16 locations now from San Francisco to Brazil, 
to Paris, to Ireland. Um, so really incredible people doing important work all around the world every day. Um, I think we have about a million senders and a billion signers to date. So the reach is huge um, and growing. It's, it's really incredible what we're doing in the real estate space, but also beyond residential real estate as well. Um, DocuSign is applicable to every industry and every vertical legal, not-for-profit, EDU. I have friends in construction, healthcare, insurance, mortgage, media, financial services. I mean, the list goes on. So, you know, with the incredible work that we're doing for brokers in the transaction management space with the pre-tagged forms that we've licensed, um, the fillable state and local association forms, I think we have about 95% of the U.S. forms coverage to date. That's awesome. Yeah, right. Um, and that wasn't the case like six years ago with public records data available now um, within rooms, obviously the e-signature that it was all built upon, the e-signature feature functionality. And then with electronic notary, we're empowering the real estate industry to sign and agree from anywhere. So I genuinely believe that there is unlimited potential for DocuSign um, there within our suite of real estate plans and products. So really the sky's the limit and we're constantly continuing to innovate, to continue to be the leader as the digital agreement platform. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. You guys are a force to be reckoned with and it is a global player. So I, th I think it's awesome. I think you guys have, and to have 95% of the forms, I mean, that's just amazing. And it allows agents to work quickly and efficiently with everything that they could possibly need in one place. Yeah, we had fantastic feedback on that one. Just having the hundreds of pages pre-tagged, fillable, ready to go, you know, where there's blank lines, there's text boxes, where there's different options, there's radio buttons. It minimizes any kind of duplicate data entry for the agent and it just saves them so much time and money. So a lot of great feedback on that one. That's awesome. Well, moving on um, to a much uh, more woman-centric uh, topic, which is exciting, and I think that you're one of the best people that can kind of speak to some of this stuff, being that you have worked for such a, a large organization, and I'm sure you have so many mentors that you can speak to, um, given the just the scale that you guys work at, which is impressive. Um, the Renew Initiative was really started to help foster a sense of community for women that work in all areas of our industry. So would you mind just talking a little bit about the value of mentorship for female professionals in real estate and kind of what part that has played in your journey? Yeah, certainly. I mean, invaluable, right? <laughs> I've been lucky enough. You, you hit the nail on the head. I've been lucky enough to have some incredible female mentors throughout my career, just along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also worked alongside just some really kind and intelligent women that were my peers or just worked in different business units that were willing to work hard and just be great business partners, both internally at DocuSign and also externally with partners like yourself um, that I work with outside of the company. So I don't necessarily think a mentor has to be someone who's so much older than you or so much more experienced than you or several levels above you to be mm -hmm. a great example of someone you might aspire to be like, you know what I mean? So like, um, it, it kind of makes mentorship more relatable so that like we as women can take control of the narrative and take the initiative to be mentors to each other, right? To give sound advice when appropriate and just exude leadership and grace so that we can hopefully just make that contagious amongst each other. Yeah, and I think that's such an important thing to bring up that, you know, a mentor can take place in all different capacities, right? It could be somebody you work with, somebody you work for, a collaborative partner outside of your organization, somebody older, somebody the same age, somebody younger of different gender. Like we as human beings are constantly inspired by what surrounds us. And I think that that's a really important thing to bring up because a lot of the times we think, oh, a mentor is somebody that I'm working for, right? Or somebody that has experienced more and somebody that I'm aspiring to be, but not necessarily. It could be somebody who hasn't experienced more, just experienced different. And that different, that kind of gray area is where we find inspiration. And um, I think that that's really important. Do you have any specific examples um, that you can think of, of times where not even just when you were a kid, but times where you felt like really inspired? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm thinking of someone specific. They've had this incredible career trajectory, but anytime their name comes up when they're not around, someone someone always says something positive. And it's always mm-hmm. something different, right? About their work ethic or um, how they are with their family or uh, the results that they've driven at the company. Um, you know, I've just, I've always heard incredible things about this person. So I wanted to get to know them better. And, and this person was willing to take time out of their day to, to speak with me and to give me some career advice, um, you know, and just wasn't going to be able to get anything from me, but was willing to take time out of their day to, to just talk to me and have that open line of communication and to give advice um, where needed and, and offered to continue to do that on a regular cadence, which I was so shocked by because it's obviously just for me, like to invest in me um, right, without right. getting anything back in return. And people who are like that are so inspiring. And I hope to be like that, you know, for someone else along the way in the future. So, well, that's just really heartwarming to hear. You know, I think that that amount of selflessness goes a long way that they probably don't even realize, but they're changing your life. And, um, you know, the more and more, we do to help other people like that. I think we're just creating a better world for what's to come. And we, I'm sure you feel super supported and like you matter. And that's, you know, all that we can really ask for. Yep. Yep. You don't forget people like that. Exactly. Well, speaking of one question that I've asked in all of my podcasts, and I really just, I think it brings out the best answers, but if you could go back in time and give advice to your younger self, what would it be? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. It's so deep, but it's so simple. And it kind of ties back to my initial conversation with you about around fearlessness is stop framing your thoughts around, oh my goodness, if this one bad thing happens, that's going to be terrible, right? Thinking about what could happen, what could go wrong in the future, but think about what, what would it be like if everything went right? If everything went as planned, you know, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Um, if I could have shifted my mindset to that type of thinking a little bit earlier, I would have really appreciated that. So yeah, I'd like to tell my younger self that everything's going to work out in the end. It's going to exceed all expectations. So just give everything, just give everything a go, you know, give it all your best shot and don't look back. Don't have any fear. Just, just do your best. Yeah. I think, you know, I think about that all the time. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? Like I'm like terrified of heights. I really am. And I know this is not like career driven at all, but like, what would I do if I wasn't afraid of heights? And if we could just live our lives like that, I think we'd speak up more and we'd take more chances and take more risks. So I think that that's really great advice. Um, just, live like nothing could go wrong. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. So less than 20% of all senior positions in real estate are held by women. What do you see as the biggest reason for that imbalance? 20%. Okay. So that's the first time I'm hearing that specific statistic or remembering it. I'm sure I've heard it before, but I have a good feeling that won't be the statistic for long. Um, women are taking the real estate industry by force, right? As we know. So I love seeing women quickly move up, whether it's an announcement in the news in a news outlet or a promotion on LinkedIn. I'm always trying my best to take time out of my day to congratulate them and recognize these women as my peers. So I think that 20% number is an opportunity for growth, obviously. And I'm, I'm happy to hopefully contribute to that number. So we're having a different conversation this time next year about that statistic. Yeah. Well, speaking of which you just weren't, you were just promoted, right? Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit? I I think people would love to hear kind of your role and, you know, I know it's new, so you're, you're kind of getting your, your feet on the ground with it, but um, yeah. Any, anything on what you're doing personally in your new role? Yeah, sure. So my role isn't necessarily new. Um, same day to day for me. I've I've been doing for a little bit now. It's just a bit of a title change. So to the senior strategic partnerships manager, um, being with the company a little over six years now, but overseeing all that is residential real estate um, on behalf of the business de- business development team here at DocuSign. So at the national level, level working with NAR as the exclusive e signature provider to 
2 million realtors. Um, obviously, they're the largest trade association in the US, uh, working with all of our state and local association um, partners, boards, MLSs, working with our large brand partners, and then working with our ISV referral and reseller partners um, and managing our forms line of business as well. So I get to do a little bit of everything. No day is exactly the same. Um, it's very exciting and I get to travel quite a bit um, within the US and meet with our key strategic business partners in person. So I really do enjoy each and every day in this in this new role that I've already kind of been in, but had an updated title change. So very appreciative for that. Yeah, well, congratulations. That's a huge, a huge feat. And, um, you know, I think it just shows a lot of hard work and dedication. And you've moved up a lot over the last um, six years of being there. So congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay, the last couple questions I have um, before we close out are just kind of some industry insights. Um, since focusing on the real estate space, what are the biggest changes you have seen and what are the challenges and opportunities still ahead for this industry in your opinion? Yeah, well, changes, of course. I mean, there's pre-pandemic, there's during the pandemic, and then there's the post-pandemic version of the residential real estate space. So obviously a lot of change there. Um, but I'm cautiously optimistic about the real estate industry this year so far. Um, obviously, I'm reading up on it every single day. Some economists are saying that 2023 may end up being a bit smoother of a year for residential real estate, our industry, than expected. Um, obviously, keeping an eye on inflation, interest rates, and job data is key. But this might be one of the most difficult years ever to predict. So technology and innovation do matter, right? And they're they're more important today, I think, than ever in real estate. There's more money going into building out technology for real estate agents in the US right now than, than anywhere in the world. So it's up to the brokers. It's their responsibility to identify technology that can create a better workflow for agents and for realtors and obviously a better experience for their customers. So DocuSign continues to play a key role in, in being the exclusive e-signature provider, as I mentioned, to all realtors nationwide um, and the transaction management provider to countless brokers enhancing the buying and selling process for all parties involved. Yeah, and I think too, with all of that, all those funds um, being dumped into technology, like the industry is just going to keep getting better and better. I think you said it really early on in the conversation, but just making it easier for agents to work within the tools that they have provided to them. Yeah, just easier for agents and better for consumers, right? They just, this is the biggest purchase they're ever going to make in their whole life. So we want to make sure that they feel comfortable and confident and smooth in, in the entire process. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is people will always be buying houses and especially when you're a first time home buyer. I know when I bought my first house, I was so nervous. I'm like, am I forgetting something? Did I do something wrong? And I used a, a really good friend of mine who's an agent and she was like, calm down, Lauren, like I've got your back, you know, <laughs> that like, trust is key, right? With the person yeah. representing you. And then you trust that they have all of the rules, regulations, technology safeguards in place to, to protect you. Right. Um, so. And I think technology plays a big role in that because a lot of the times we're, you know, the ones putting kind of like those safeguards in place so they can't make a mistake. And because we're human, right? We, I mean, I make mistakes all the time. So um, I think it plays a huge role. Yes, agreed. Awesome. Well, thank you again for agreeing to be on the Renew podcast. I think that this is going to be so impactful to all of our listeners. But before we go, I just wanted to do two things. One, any exciting new things coming up at DocuSign that you'd like to share? Um, exciting new things. Well, I will be in DC next week for the NAR legislative meetings, Lauren. So I hope to see you there. Yes. I will have to my own stomping grounds. I don't have to yes. get on planes, trains, and automobiles. Yes, we'll have to connect there. Um, it'll be great to, to meet with all of our partners. We also recently launched Transactions Workspace. I don't know if you heard about that, um, but that's our tool to help agents keep track of all their forms and docs in each deal in one convenient location. And that's at the individual agent level within eSign. So if anyone like to learn more about that, they can head to DocuSign.com or reach out to me directly. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in DC. Um, the second thing is your last pop quiz question. So this one, I know you and I both share a love for theater. Um, oh, yes, we do. Yeah. I'm a huge drama nerd. I have been my whole life. 
Um, but I am dying to ask you this question. If you had to choose Hamilton or Wicked, what would you choose? How could you ask me this question? Oh my goodness. Um, to, to attend? Because I've seen both. To attend, yep. Which On one do you Broadway. Just, yeah. Oh dear. Okay, I'm going to have to go with Hamilton unless one of my friends is performing in Wicked, which I've seen before. I had a friend go on as Fiero. So that made attending Wicked extremely special. Um, but I, I would have to pick Hamilton between the two. It's a hard choice, really. It, it really is. I'm a big fan of both. I love the theatrics of Wicked. And I think it's like such a fun, whimsical story. But something about the Hamilton music just draws you in. It's a hard, I don't know that I could choose. So <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're both on par for me. But I, for the sake of the question, I'll choose Hamilton. Yeah. How about well, you? What, what's your choice? I think I'd have to go with Wicked. I'm a huge Wizard of Oz fan okay. and I just love, it, it's a really, I mean, we're like splitting hairs. It's a really <laughs> hard choice, but. No wrong answer, Lauren. Exactly, no wrong answer. I just like, if I had one sh one ticket and I would choose which show to go to, I think Wicked would beat it out just by a little bit. Okay, fair. But that just means, you know, we'll have to talk after on our synopsis of the show. And now we know what we'll do in New York next time we go to New York Inman. Yes, we'll have to go see a show, no doubt. Exactly. Well, thank you, Tiffany, again. This has been such a pleasure. For all of you guys listening, um, please make sure to sign up for Renew if you haven't already. Just go to rentspreed.com backslash renew. Um, and if you're listening to this, please make sure to like and subscribe to our podcast on whatever pod platform that you're listening to it on. And if you love it, please feel free to give it a five-star rating. We would be ever so grateful. Um, but thanks again. And until next time, guys.